Well, good morning and welcome to Morning Mail. Sorry about the slight delay in getting started this morning, but uh, wasn't watching my clock. Good to have you with me this morning. I appreciate you taking time whenever it is, either live or throughout the day or whatever occasion you have to join us in Morning Mail. We're going to continue looking at 1 Timothy chapter 3 in uh, just, just a moment as we uh, survey this first letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. Let's begin, though, with prayer. Loving Father, thank you for the day and its blessings for you watching over and being with us. Thank you for the moisture uh, Tuesday night. Uh, pre appreciate that, and, and it's such a blessing to us, and, and just welcome more. We're open to more whenever it might come. Continue, Father, to watch over and be with our world. We know you're in charge. We know and we trust that you <coughs> have everything under control. And we just pray, Father, that you would help us to turn people to the gospel, that they might know you and your son Jesus in obedience of faith, being baptized for the forgiveness and remission of sins, that they might serve you. Father, be with the country of Ukraine and our brethren there. Be with our own country and all throughout the world, countries that are uh, needing so desperately, the whole world needing to turn to you. Be with those, Father, of our number that we're aware of and even those we're not aware of who are in need of our prayers because of sickness and uh, other problems in their lives. And we just pray, Father, that we can encourage and help them. Thank you for Jesus and the Bible. I ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we stopped on Morning Mail yesterday, we had looked at all the qualifications for deacons except the final one. We're going to begin there today, and then following that, I have a few general statements to make regarding elders and deacons. Now, Paul's final qualification for deacons is found in first, verse 12 of 1 Timothy chapter 3. And it echoes two of the qualities that elders are to have. He wrote, quote, Deacons must be husbands of only one wife and good managers of their children and their own households, end quote. Now, like the elders, they are to be one woman men. Like the elders, they are to manage, that is, be the heads of and take care of their children and their households well. A deacon's work often involves drudgery and frequently goes unnoticed. Perhaps this is why Paul added a special word of encouragement in verse 13 of chapter 3 of 1 Timothy. He wrote, quote, For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a high standing and great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. End quote. A literal rendering of the two Greek words translated served well as deacons would simply be served well. Some commentators suggest that verse 13 includes all the servants mentioned in the chapter, the overseers, the deacons, and even the women. This is possible, but verse 13 appears to be a follow-up to verse 10. Verse 10, which is definitely talking about deacons, says, quote, let them serve as deacons, end quote. Literally, let them serve. While verse 13 adds that those who do so well, have served well, will receive certain blessings. Now, serve as deacons in both verses comes from the same root word. Application might be made to all, any and all of the servants of the Lord, but our remarks are going to be confined to those who serve as deacons. First, Paul says, they, quote, obtain for themselves a high standing, end quote. Now, the Greek word translated high is literally 
good. Standing is from a Greek word which denotes a step, such as steps on a staircase or stairway. As a figure of speech, then, it can refer to a stage in a career. Some take this to mean that if one serves well as a deacon, he will be promoted, quote-unquote, to the office of elder. Now, it is true that some elders first served as deacons, but there is no indication in the New Testament that being a deacon is a prerequisite to being an elder, or that being appointed an elder is a reward for being a good deacon. The duties and responsibilities of elders and deacons differ. Some who are excellent deacons would not make good elders, and some who are excellent elders would not make good deacons. The phrase high standing probably has to do with being highly respected by the local congregation, even as Timothy had been. See Acts 16, verse 2. Further, those who serve well as deacons, quote, obtain for themselves great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus, end quote. Confidence is from a Greek word comprised of all and speech. Now, this term originally referred to speaking boldly, but it came to have the additional connotation of boldness or confidence in general. It could involve speaking boldly to others regarding the gospel. See Ephesians 6, verses 19 and 20 boldly approaching the throne of God in prayer, see Hebrews 4, verse 16, or just having confidence in general. In his second letter to Timothy, Paul wrote, quote, God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline, end quote, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. Now, before we leave the qualifications of elders and deacons and go on further in 1 Timothy 3, it may be worthwhile for us to take a few uh, moments and make some comparisons and contrast. So let's start with a brief comparison of elders and deacons. Both offices require mature Christian men who act the way Christians are supposed to act and who have their priorities straight. Also, both elders and deacons are re required to be good, solid family men. There are, however, several differences in their designations, responsibilities, and qualifications. The term overseer, which Paul used in verses 1 and 2 of 1 Timothy 3, indicates these are men who have the oversight of the congregation. While the term deacons, verses 8 and 12 of chapter 3, indicates that these are men who serve the local congregation. Elders are given the responsibility of managing or ruling the local congregation and taking care of its needs. See chapter 3, verse 5. A deacon's responsibility is to fulfill whatever task the elders give him. As shepherds, elders are to feed the flock. We therefore read that elders are to be able to teach. Verse 2. Deacons are given no corresponding requirement. Some deacons do teach, but the ability to to teach is not a prerequisite for serving as a deacon. The most striking contrast regarding chapter 3 is an unstated one. Paul's description of what church leaders should be 
versus what the false teachers in Ephesus were. Paul said that elders must be able to teach, verse 2. The false teachers wanted to be teachers of the law, but they did not understand either what they were saying or the matters about which they made confident assertions. Chapter 1, verse 7. Elders must be gentle and peaceable. Verse 3 of chapter 3. The false teachers had, quote, a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes, out of which arose envy, strife, abuse, ab or abusive language, evil suspicions, and constant friction, end quote. Chapter 6, 1 Timothy, verses 4 and 5. Elders are supposed to be, quote, free from the love of money, end quote. Chapter 3, verse 3. The false teachers supposed that, quote, godliness is a means of gain, end quote. Chapter 6, verse 5. Both elders and deacons are to be good family men. Chapter 3, verses 2, 4, 5, and 12. Some false teachers were opposed to marriage. Chapter 4, verse 3. Elders are to avoid con or conceit. Chapter 3, verse 6. The false teachers were proud. Chapter 6, verse 4. Boastful and arrogant. See T 2 Timothy 3, verse 2. Deacons are to, be, are to keep a good grip on the faith. Chapter 3, verse 9. The false teachers had made shipwreck of their faith, chapter 1, verse 19. Deacons are to maintain a clear conscience, chapter 3, verse 9. The false teachers ignored their consciences, chapter 1, verse 19, carterizing them, chapter 4, verse 2, and thus rendering them useless. Paul's unstated message to the congregation in Ephesus seems to be clear. Quote, the false teachers are not qualified to lead your congregation. Do not allow them to be your leaders. End quote. Now, it has been said that we need to avoid two extremes regarding the qualifications for elders and deacons. One extreme is to think of Paul's words as mere suggestions and therefore pay little attention to them. Conscientious believers in the inspiration of the Bible believe that that is, or recognize rather, that that is wrong. The other extreme is just as wrong, making the requirements so hard that few, if any, can qualify. Again, let's note that these are no unique traits in the list for elders and deacons. The qualifications for elders and deacons depict what every, every Christian husband and father should be. This being the case, Dayton Cassie suggested in an article entitled Caring for the Church <coughs> from Truth for Today in April of 1997, pages 26 and 27. He wrote, quote, uh, excuse me, he suggested that uh, if a congregation cannot find men like these after a decade or so, quote, then a far greater problem than organizing exists. Such a congregation needs to address the need for Christianizing, end quote. Well, let's close today's morning mail, as well as our look at the qualifications for elders and deacons found in 1 Timothy chapter 3, with a challenge that we opposed earlier. If you are a Christian male, strive to develop these qualities listed in 1 Timothy chapter 3 so that you may be what you should be and be of the greatest possible service in the cause of Christ. 
tomorrow we're going to continue uh, looking at 1 Timothy chapter 3. I hope you can be with me then. Let's close our time this morning with prayer. Loving Father, thank you for these qualifications we've been looking at this week of overseers, those men who serve as elders in a local congregation, of deacons, those men who serve as servants and carry on much of the uh, work of the congregation, behind the scenes even sometimes. Father, thank you for these qualifications, but help us as we look at them and think about them, especially those of us who, who are male, to realize that these are things that we need to work toward. These are characteristics we need to have in our lives, whether we ever, ever serve as a deacon or an elder. We still need to strive to reach this level of growth and service. Thank you for revealing these. And may we look at them, Father, with all seriousness from time to time as, as we consider from time to time adding additional men uh, as elders or deacons to the congregation wherever we may be. Thank you for the Christ, and we pray in his name. Amen. Will you go out, make it a great Thursday. Lord willing, we'll see you back here tomorrow for more Morning Mail.